Welcome everyone. Today we're going to be creating a timer. It started out as an hour timer when I first started doing the project and it ended up being an hour and a half timer with different intervals starting at one minute up to one and a half hours. Today we're going to be doing the timer prototyping which was on the Arduino. You will need the following for the prototyping. Three 220 ohm resistors, one 10K resistor, three LEDs, one NPN transistor, a piezo buzzer, a button, some jumper wires, a breadboard, and an Arduino. Let's go look at the code. I've used a lot of defines to make the program more readable. The defines don't use any memory other than the actual value itself. I've also used preprocessor directives, so you can use the same sketch on an Arduino and the ATtiny85. The times array holds the seconds that can be selected for the countdown clock. The function sleep will beep three times when switching off and twice when switching on. It will put the ATtiny into low power mode or emulate the way the ATtiny will sleep when prototyping on the Arduino. The beep function beeps. The clear display, display time and display countdown time functions control the three LEDs on or off states. I've also included pre-processor directives in the functions to easily choose between whether I'm using a common anode or a common cathode for the LEDs. The button check function is called on every loop of the loop function. It checks if the button is pressed, how long it is pressed, and returns whether it has been pressed quickly, long, or extremely long. This function is the interface between the code and the real world. It plays a huge function in the program, and it took a long time to make it feel just right. I set up the pins in the setup function. In the loop function, I check the button's state, then decide what mode the program should go into, either choosing the timer value, countdown, or switching off. When the program has counted down to zero, it buzzes. It's a bit all over the place, but it works. I'll explain a bit on how to use the device once it is built. I'm using the Arduino and using a common anode for the circuit. Be sure to change the code accordingly. Upload the code to the Arduino, unplug it, grab your prototyping parts, and let's start building the circuit. Connect the 5 volt to the positive rail and the ground to the ground rail. Grab the three LEDs and connect the anodes to a positive rail and the cathodes to three separate terminal strips. Place resistors between the LEDs and another three terminal strips. Connect the LED resistor pair to pins 11, 12 and 13. Place the transistor onto the breadboard. Place the buzzer between the collector of the transistor and the positive rail using a jumper wire. Connect the resistor to the base of the transistor and another terminal strip, then to pin 5 of the Arduino. Connect the emitter of the transistor to the ground rail. I'm using a transistor on the buzzer because I have no idea what my buzzer's power consumption is and I don't want it to draw too much power from one pin of the Arduino. Place the button between two terminal strips. One end of the button goes to the ground rail and the other end goes to the Arduino. Power up the Arduino and let's have a look at the overly complicated hour timer. When I first power it up, the LED flashes, which means it is counting down. If I hold the button in for more than 75 milliseconds, at least one of the LEDs are always on. This means that I can choose the time I need. If I give the button a short press, the LEDs change. The LEDs are a three digit binary number, one through seven, and they correspond to the times array. I can select the time I want to count on by giving the button a long press. Once again, it is counting down. Fast forward through the countdown and it screams at you until you press the button. Then it switches off. If I tap the button again, it starts counting down from the start of the last selected time. If I want to turn it off, I hold down the button for an extremely long time. Then the LEDs start flashing and it will turn off. 
If you use a red, green and blue LED covered by a diffuser, you suddenly get 7 colors corresponding to the times array. Here I also changed the circuit to a common cathode and changed the code accordingly. Unless you can read binary, the colors make using the timer 100 times easier. The colors on my final version do not match the ones that I did here because the LEDs have been wired differently. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you've made this project, let me know in the comments below. As always, there's a step-by-step -step guide in the description below, along with the schematics for both the Arduino and AT-Tiny. Bye!